In this lesson, we're going to learn how to evaluate functions using a graph. Let's start with what we already know. Suppose we have a coordinate plane. On that coordinate plane, we have the graph of a function. On the graph are many points, for example, the point 2, 3. We know that these points represent inputs and outputs. X is the input, so the input is 2. Y is the output, so the output is 3. In this function, the input of 2 produces the output of 3. We learned previously about function notation. Function notation looks like this, f of input equals output. Since the input is 2 and the output is 3, we can write this f of 2 equals 3. This relationship between the function notation f of 2 equals 3 and the point 2, 3 on the graph is very useful and we're going to use it a lot in this lesson. Let's take a look at some examples. First of all, before we get started, let's keep in mind that f of input equals output, or if we want to write it more mathematically, f of x equals y, because x is the input and y is the output. Let's suppose we have the graph of a function. This is a linear function because the graph is a line. The directions ask us to use the graph to evaluate the function at the given values. And here's our first example. f of 0 equals. We want to know what f of 0 is equal to. Now let's consider what this means. f of 0 equals something. f of input equals output. 0 is an input or an x value. So we'll go along our graph to the x-axis, we'll go where x is 0, and we'll draw a line right up to the graph. That is the point 0, 3. 0 is the x, and 3 is the y. 0 is the input, and 3 is the output. So f of 0 equals 3. Let's take a look at another example. Evaluate f of 2. f of input equals output. So f of 2, 2 is the input, and we want to find the output. We go along the x-axis, and we go to the input 2. We go up to the graph where that point is, and that is the point 2, 4. x is the input, and y is the output. So the input is 2, and the output is 4. Since the output is 4, we can say that f of 2 equals 4. Here's another example, f of 5. Take a moment and see if you can evaluate the function f of 5 using the graph. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. f of 5 equals something. f of input equals output. 5 is the input, and we want to find the output. We go along the x-axis, because the x is the input, and the input is 5. We go up to the graph and we find that point. That is the point 5, comma, 5 and a half. The output is 5 and a half. So f of 5 equals 5.5. Let's try a couple more examples. See if you can evaluate this function using the graph to evaluate f of negative 6 and f of 10. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check. Let's compare answers. In our first exercise, we have f of negative 6. f of input equals output, so negative 6 is the input. I go on the x-axis to negative 6, and I find that point. That is the point negative 6, comma, 0, so the output is 0. Therefore, f of negative 6 is equal to 0. Next, let's evaluate f of 10. f of 10 equals something. f of input equals output. 10 is the input, and we want to find the output. We go on our graph on the x-axis, where the inputs are, and we go up to the point. The point is 10, 8. So the input 10 has the output 8. The output is 8, therefore f of 10 is equal to 8. 
Now, let's look at a slightly different example. Using the same graph, the directions now say for what value of x does f of x equal 4. Think about what we're trying to find here. f of input equals output. This time we know the output, but we do not know the input. We need to find the input. The output is 4, so we draw a line horizontally across our graph through the outputs of 4, and we find where the graph intersects that line. The point is 2 comma 4, therefore the input is 2, so f of 2 equals 4. Now the directions specifically say for what value of x. Because they asked you to state the value of x, you must say x equals 2. Let's look at another exercise. f of x equals 0. Let's see what we have here. f of input equals output. The input is x and the output is 0. We know the output and we want to find the input. The output is 0, so we draw a horizontal line through the y-axis at 0, and we find where our graph intersects. It intersects at the point negative 6, comma, 0. So when the input is negative 6, the output is 0. So f of negative 6 equals 0. Because they asked us to state the value of x, we must say x equals negative 6. Here are two problems for you to try. For what value of x does f of x equal negative 2? And for what value of x does f of x equal 7? Can you figure these out? Pause the video here and come back when you're ready to check. Let's see how you did. f of input equals output, so f of x equals negative 2. We know the output is negative 2, and we want to find the input. We go to our graph and we draw a horizontal line across at negative 2. Where does the graph intersect that line? At the point negative 10, negative 2. Input negative 10, output negative 2. So the input is negative 10. f of negative 10 is equal to negative 2. Since the directions ask us the value of x, we have to say x equals negative 10. f of x equals 7. f of input equals output. We know the output is 7, but we do not know the input. We want to find the input. The output is 7, so we draw a line across our graph where the outputs are 7. We look to see where the graph intersects that line. It's at the point 8, 7. Input 8, output 7. Therefore, f of 8 is equal to 7, and since they asked us to state the value of x, we will say that x equals 8. Now let's look at another example. Let's look at a different function. This one is a v-shaped graph. It's actually an upside-down v-shaped graph. It's known as an absolute value function. We'll learn more about that later. Can you use this graph to evaluate the function for f of 7? f of 8, f of negative 3, f of negative 7, and f of 0? Give it a try and come back when you're ready. We'll see how you did. Let's compare our answers. We start with f of 7. f of input equals output. We know the input is 7, and we want to find the output. We go to our graph where the input is 7, that's the x value, and we see the point 7 comma 1. The input is 7 and the output is 1. Therefore, f of 7 equals 1. For f of 8, once again, f of input equals output. The input is 8. We want to find the output. We know that the inputs are the x value, so we go to our x value of 8, and we find the point. The point is 8, 0. Input 8, output 0. So f of 8 equals 0. Next, f of negative 3 equals something. f of input equals output. The input is negative 3. We want to find the output. We go across our graph to where the input is negative 3, 
and we find the point, negative 3, comma, negative 1. The input is negative 3, and the output is negative 1. Since the output is negative 1, we conclude that f of negative 3 equals negative 1. f of negative 7 equals something. f of input equals output. The input is negative 7, and we want to find the output. We go across our x's, and we find negative 7. The point is negative 7, negative 5. Input negative 7, output negative 5. Therefore, the output is negative 5, so f of negative 7 equals negative 5. Finally, f of 0 equals something. f of input equals output. The input is 0, the output is what we want to find. We go across our x-axis, look for the input of 0, and see what the point is there. The point is 0, 2. Input 0, output 2. Therefore, f of 0 equals 2. Next, let's answer a different type of question. For what value or values of x does f of x equal 5 and does f of x equal 2? The first thing I want to point out is the word value with an s in parentheses in the direction. That s in parentheses means there might be one value or multiple values. Let's take a look. f of x equals 5. f of input equals output. The output is 5. We need to find the input. Since the output is 5, we draw a horizontal line across our graph and look for the point of intersection. The point is 3, 5. The input is 3. So, f of 3 equals 5, which means x is equal to 3. That's what they asked us to find state the values of x. In the second problem, f of x equals 2, once again, f of input equals output. The input is x, and the output is 2. We need to find the input. We draw our line across the page at 2, and notice that there are two places where this graph intersects this line, at the point 0, 2, and at the point 6, 2. Therefore, the input 0 produces the output of 2, so f of 0 equals 2, and the input 6 also produces the output of 2, so f of 6 equals 2. There are two separate values of x, in this case, that have an output of 2, x equals 0, or x equals 6. So I will state both of them connected with an OR. Often mathematicians do not write the OR, and they'll simply write x equals 0, box it in, and write x equals 6 and box it in. Others will write it with the OR in between. Here are some examples of functions where the outputs will come from multiple inputs, just like we just did. Please pause the video here and determine the value or values of x, where f of x equals 0 and f of x equals negative 2. Let's compare our answers. f of x equals 0. f of input equals output. The input is unknown, and the output is 0. We need to find the input. The output is 0, so we draw our line across the graph where the outputs are 0. We see that the graph intersects our line at two separate points, at the point negative 2, comma, 0, and at the point 8, comma, 0. The input negative 2 has an output of 0, and the input 8 also has an output of 0. So the x values are x equals negative 2, or x equals 8. f of x equals negative 2. f of input equals output. We don't know the input, but we know that the output is negative 2. We draw our line across the graph at negative 2. Notice that the graph intersects this line at two separate points. Those points are negative 4, negative 2, and 10, negative 2. The input negative 4 produces an output of negative 2, and the input of 10 also has the output of negative 2. There are two inputs, so we'll write them both, x equals negative 4 or x equals 10. 
Here's one more for you to try. Can you determine the value or values for which f of x equals 3? Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. f of x equals 3. f of input equals output. The input is unknown and the output is 3. We want to find the input. Since the output is 3, we draw the line across the graph where the output is 3. We notice that our graph intersects that line at two different places, 1, 3, and 5, 3. Therefore, the input 1 has an output of 3, and the input 5 also has an output of 3. The two x values are x equals 1, or x equals 5. Let's end today with one last example, kind of a self-assessment, to see how you're doing. Here's a function shown on the graph, and two questions related to it. Please pause the video here, find the answers, and come back when you're ready to check. Let's compare answers. Evaluate f of negative 1. f of input equals output. Input negative 1, we want to find the output. We go across the graph where the input is negative 1, and we find the point, negative 1, comma, negative 4. There, the input is negative 1, and the output is negative 4. Therefore, f of negative 1 equals negative 4. The final question, for what value of x does f of x equal 5? f of input equals output. Here, the output is 5, and we want to know what the input is. We draw our line across the graph at 5, and we look for the points of intersection. This time, there are two of them, negative 7, 5, and 5, 5. The input negative 7 has an output of 5, and the input of 5 also has an output of 5. Two x values, x equals negative 7, or x equals 5. And now you know how to evaluate a function from a graph. It all comes down to f of input equals output, and then looking at the graph carefully to find the information that you want. Remember, you can learn more about evaluating functions from a graph in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.